eight Neville Goddard principles related to Think and Grow Rich. Many of you already know that I'm a huge fan of Think and Grow Rich. It is the one book that transformed my life back in 2004. It was around that time when I was in $50,000 debt, and I followed the principles in the book, and within a few years, I found myself out of debt. And since then, I went on to create other definite chief aims, and I was able to create success in those areas of my life. Rising up in corporate, buying my first house, starting my IT business, growing it up to 50 clients, and just about every area of my life that I now enjoy, which has been a net result of working with the principles, I have to thank Think and Grow Rich. The very philosophies, the strategies, everything that's within that book help me to get where I am. Now, the journey of creating success and continuing to do so has brought me to the works of other authors that I find inspire me, uplift me, and take what I have learned from Think and Grow Rich to another level and even dimensionalize and help me understand that what is really going on with the concepts. And Neville Goddard, who I came across about a year ago, has been someone that has been really inspiring to me and has shared with me through various books and lectures that I've listened to deeper insights and perspectives of how my reality is being created. I'm a huge fan of working with the power of my subconscious mind. That's one of the core principles covered in Think and Grow Rich, your ability to understand and build a relationship with your subconscious mind and work with your subconscious mind to create that what you desire, bring forth whatever it is that you want to create. We realize that in this life, we learn many different things throughout our journey, and this is five sensory-based input and meaning that we get from others, and we consciously give it this meaning, and sometimes we unconsciously give it this meaning. A lot of times we don't consciously give it the meaning. But the bottom line is this. That information goes and impresses itself in the subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind in, is constantly creating in our reality that what is impressed in the subconscious mind from our past. So the net result of what we have in our experience right now is based on programming that's in our subconscious mind. Now, there's many ways of programming the subconscious mind to that what we desire to create, to bring forth that what we desire. We can do it via the five senses, or we could do it via the sixth sense. And the sixth sense, Neville Goddard puts a lot of emphasis on it in the imagination elements of his philosophy, working with the imagination. It is in the imagination where you come in contact with infinite intelligence, the potentiality that exists to bring forth that what you desire beyond what exists in the current world that we live in. In other words, there are many ways of bringing forth that what you desire, and the way we do it is by working with our imagination. So I want to blend these two philosophies because I want everyone to not only value the work of Napoleon Hill, but also Neville Goddard to help facilitate encourage, inspire, and produce the results that you are looking to create in whatever it is that you desire. I believe that we are here to create. We were created in the image of the Creator, and thus our responsibility here is to create in the spirit of harmony and bring forth our vision, our true identity. Many of us have formed a false identity, which is a net result of five sensory-based data input and meaning given to it, by ourselves or others to form a identity that might not necessarily be who we really are. At a certain stage in the journey, we begin to question the kind of life that we live and the reality that we have, and we ask ourselves some really deep questions. Who are we really, and why are we really here? Now, I'm a huge fan of the Ikigai model, and I believe that once you uncover your identity or you go on the journey to uncovering your identity, or as you continue to uncover your identity, you also discover the importance of doing what you love to do, doing what you're good at, what the world needs, and what you can turn into a career or a business, what you can get paid for. Receive some kind of return for that what you contribute to others. When you live from that perspective, you tend to experience living a more meaningful life. You feel a lot more fulfilled you feel more harmonious within. 
And it is during that stage where you have a harmonious relationship between the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and the superconscious or infinite intelligence. It was also around that time where you start to create to a higher degree and bring forth results in a lot more of a rapid manner. And I believe one of the reasons why is because you find yourself in a flow state, a state where you enjoy life, you enjoy the journey and the destination. You're motivated towards the outcome, and you also enjoy the journey. That's why following the principles in Think and Grow Rich can be really helpful for you to create the life that you want, as well as the principles that Neville Goddard teaches. So let's go through eight of them right now. And the biggest emphasis that we're going to put on this discussion is working with consciousness, the world within. The world within created the world without. Everything that you experience via your five senses is a net result of the meaning you give to it within. There's data being received via the five senses, and then there's a meaning that you are subconsciously, most of the time subconsciously, assigning to that meaning. And as a result of that, that is going into the subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind is bringing forth more of those experiences. And these could be desirable experiences or undesirable experiences. But by working with this information here and in Think and Grow Rich, you begin to take control of the kind of information you take it, and more importantly, the meaning you give to the information so that you can program your subconscious mind to project outwards and materialize into form that what you desire. Everything you ever want in life exists right now, where you are right now. You are sitting on your own acres of diamonds. There's a saying, everywhere you go, there you are. So in order to achieve, you have to become or as he says in quote number one here, it is only by change of consciousness, by actually changing your concept of yourself, that you can build more stately mansions, the manifestations of higher and higher concepts. So we're created in the image of the Creator. We're here to learn how to create. And as we bring forth our vision, we start to understand more of who we are, we uncover more aspects, more elements related to who we are. We bring that forth, and that is part of the creative process. And that what we manifest, that what we bring forth, is higher and higher concepts of ourselves. But the bottom line is this, that is done within. As we continue in this journey, we realize that by changing the cause within, the external world changes. And while we might try to force things in the external world, it's really about changing our consciousness within to some way, somehow, automat automatically reflect. And yes, you'll be doing things. Yes, you'll be navigating reality and living life and filling in this story of life with different meanings and so forth and experiences. But what you'll find, it'll be much more harmonious when you make the changes within. So instead of trying to change the external world, we change our consciousness within. Napoleon Hill says, Somewhere in your makeup, perhaps in the cells of your brain, there lies sleeping the seed of achievement, which, if aroused and put into action, would carry you to heights such as you may never have hoped to attain. We all have within us the seeds of greatness. And based on the five sensory input and the meaning that we have given to five sensory input, we either feel empowered or disempowered. We either feel that we can do something about it or we feel we can't do something about it. Now, either one of those meanings will impress itself on the subconscious mind to project outwards and materialize form the facts that reveal what is within the subconscious. But the truth is this. We can change that meaning around. So if you've learned that meaning from the past, that you can't do something about it, you can change that meaning around so that you can take a more empowered stance on reality. Now, how do you do that? By consuming information that is related towards your vision, that uplifts and empowers you, and making a commitment as well to release the need and the desire to consume information that disempowers you, that instills in you doubts, fears, and indecision in your ability, in your own greatness. It is then when you'll learn to trust yourself and work with your imagination. And then 
when you hold your imaginal acts, or you visualize that what you desire, or you dream what you want to create, that information will some way, somehow, bring forth in behaviors, in actions, it will attract the right people, environment and reality will change and you will go into a different state related to that what you imagine and you will experience reality from that state. What exists in this external world is infinite vibrations or states as Neville Goddard puts it. He calls it states and Napoleon Hill calls it vibrations. But the bottom line is this, as you believe within you, so it shall be done unto you. So if you believe it's possible, then that seed exists within you right now and you're aware of it, and you can honor that to bring forth your vision. If you don't have that seed within you, then understand that it exists within you. It is somewhere there within you. And one of your goals in life is to find it, honor it, and continue to honor it till you create more and more visions that you once held in your mind in reality so you could realize the power that you have within. As mentioned for me, my journey started out as just trying to get out of $50,000 debt. That's all I wanted to do in 2004. But in the process, I uncovered the law, how all this stuff works, and I begin to trust myself and work with programming my subconscious mind, guarding my subconscious mind from negative information, infusing it with empowering information so that what I can do is have a greater sense of confidence and faith that I have the ability within me to bring forth that what I desire. And the more I encourage it, the more I'm able to, with joy, bliss, ease, and grace, bring forth that what I desire. He also said that psychologists have correctly said that when one is truly ready for a thing, it puts in its appearance. When one is truly ready for a thing, what does that mean? It is to believe in your mind that you are that thing, that what you want to create, that what you desire is you. It is part of your soul's journey. It is part of the grand scheme of how reality works. You were created in the image of the creator and that what you desire is yours to be brought forth. And anything that stands in your way is programming within the subconscious mind that is doubts, indecision, and fear-based that you had learned from the five senses and meaning given to it either through past experiences that you had consciously taken in the meaning by believing the disempowering information or it was taught to you. But now you're at a stage of consciousness where you realize this is what's happening and you can forgive it. You can release that programming by uncovering what is within you through the various experiences that you have with people, environment, and circumstance. One of my favorite exercises is to, as I go about my day-to-day, -day, is reflect upon what people, environment, and circumstance is revealing to me about myself, what is within me, what is within my subconscious mind that I'm projecting outwards, both, both positive and negative. And if an undesirable event or circumstance or experience is expressed from the subconscious mind and revealed in the external world, I reflect back to identify where the cause became or where was it that I assumed that that's the way that reality works, that materialized in the external world as fact. And upon reflection, I'm able to work with that information and cleanse my subconscious mind through subconscious mind audios, working with my imagination, and infusing myself with empowering information to rewrite that belief that I have about that circumstance or situation that constantly or projects outwards in the external world and reveals to me what's within my subconscious mind. So number two, he says, you must turn from the objective appearance of things to the subjective center of things, your consciousness, if you truly desire to know the cause of the phenomena of life and how to use the knowledge to realize your fondest dreams. So turn from the objective appearance of things, which is a net result of what we're talking about, which is meaning that we're given to what it is that we see based on past experiences and go to the subjective center of things, as in the cause within, the consciousness within, your consciousness, 
that projected outwards and materialized it into form, expressed it outwards into form, and adjust the cause within. Napoleon Hill says, remember too, that all who succeed in life get off to a bad start and pass through many heartbreaking struggles before they arrive. The turning point in the lives of those who succeed usually comes at the moment of some crisis through which they are introduced to their other selves. So your true self is one of abundance, well-being, happiness, joy. And your mission in life here is to discover that true self by going through the process, by working with the information and thinking grow rich, by working with your imagination, by observing what is being revealed to you in the external world and adjusting the program within. And then you get more visions and your goal is to bring it forth, to hold true to it and live the life that you want to live. And then you realize that what you always wanted is yours. And one of the things you realize in this journey is that five sensory based input and meaning given to it by the external world sometimes might get you to want something that you don't really want. And this is uncovered in the process. So you start with what you want to create right now and make a commitment that you're going to stick with it by applying the principles and philosophies that we talk about and create it. And then once you create it, you start to understand and realize how to create and your true self and you'll receive more hunches and inspirations from within. And then you'll also discover that the fastest way to be able to achieve that what you desire is by changing the cause within. That is by changing the meaning you're giving to the various experiences that you're having in the external world to that that is empowering, that moves you forward. And when he says that a lot of people get off to a bad start, well, that's precisely how it works. That information, the bad start, is information that was taken in and assumed in the subconscious mind to be fact. And the conscious mind, which was a lot of times not cognizant and aware of what the kind of information is that was going in, was allowing that information to, giving, to go in. And the meaning that was given to it was given to it by others or external world for whatever reason, impressed itself in the subconscious mind and created this so-called bad start. Now, what we want to do is release that. We want to understand and forgive the past and go to work by healing the past. And a good book to read is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. All sense impressions, which are perceived through the five senses, are stopped by the conscious thinking mind and may be either passed on to the subconscious mind or rejected at will. The conscious faculty serves, therefore, as an outer guarded or outer guard to the approach of the subconscious. So what we have to do is guard our subconscious mind, protect our subconscious mind, nurture our subconscious mind with uplifting, empowering kind of information. And the way we do this is through encouragement. Most of us in our past, we've learned through a combination of valid information and shame. Okay, so we've experienced life where people would teach us things, but then if we wouldn't do it the way that they wanted us to do it or whatever was the right way, they would shame us for it. They would you know, say that we're, we're not smart or we're not good enough for whatever reason. They were projecting their own reality onto us, and we internalize that meaning unknowingly. When we realize that that's what has happened, we forgive them, we release that within us, and we understand that what has happened is the subconscious mind has assumed that shame to be true, and it constantly projects outwards and expresses itself into form through people, environment, and circumstance and experiences to reveal what is within ourselves. And we make a commitment that we are not going to allow that kind of information to go in, that kind of meaning. So we guard our subconscious mind. And every time we learn something, we choose to be around those that educate us and teach us from more of an encouraging perspective. And if we find ourselves around harsh criticism or anything that is presented in that way, we understand that that harshness is that person's reality, and we choose not to identify with that harshness or the shame that we're experiencing, thus guarding the subconscious mind. He says, the subconscious mind consists of a field of consciousness in which every impulsive thought that reaches the objective mind through any of the five senses 
is classified and recorded and from which thoughts may be recalled or withdrawn as letters may be taken from a filing cabinet. It receives and files sense impressions of thoughts or thoughts regardless of their nature. You may voluntarily plant in your subconscious mind any plan, thought, or purpose which you desire to translate into its physical or monetary equivalent. So we have a choice to work with a very powerful aspect of ourself, the subconscious mind. It is responsible for creating reality as we know it. And we could either take in information given to us by others, the meaning given to us by others, that is empowering or disempowering, realizing that now, from this level of consciousness that we're at to recognize this, it's programming our subconscious mind to bring forth the equivalent. So we have a choice then to choose the kind of information that we take in. We can voluntarily plant in our subconscious mind that what nurtures, uplifts, and elevates us to levels of thinking where we feel a greater sense of faith and appreciation for ourselves, self-love, unconditional love, and so forth, which allows us to nurture and honor our dreams in our imagination and live from that perspective. I recommend that you watch the video that I did with Neville Goddard, and I mentioned Abdullah. I'll put a link in the description. In Abdullah was his mentor. He was an Ethiopian rabbi, and he taught Neville Goddard the Kabbalah, which is mystical interpretations of the Bible. That's part of it. And one of the great lessons that he taught him right from the beginning is to live as if he was in that state that he wants to be at and to live from that perspective, denying anything from the five senses that says anything contrarian to that he is not there right now. Now, this may seem like a far-out statement or a very bold thing to do. A lot of people don't live reality like this. But what you're going to find is that the more you honor this information, the more you're going to understand how that works and live from that perspective. Now, this doesn't mean you're faking it. It means that you're understanding that the external world is a projection from the inner world. So you live in your imagination, in that perspective, and then you start to see signs, hunches, inspirations, synchronicities of the external world organizing and arranging in a way that is related to the vision. You'll be doing things. You'll be attracted to people, environment, and circumstances. Hunches and inspirations will show up. But the bottom line is this. The external world, when you hold on to that imagination-based experience that you want to see true, will become true if held with faith and conviction. And that's why he says in number three here, man's chief delusion is his conviction that there are causes other than his own state of consciousness. All that beliefs, um, all that befalls a man, all that is done by him, all that comes from him, happens as a result of his state of consciousness. Okay, state of consciousness. So at this stage, we have a deeper understanding, and I recommend watching all my recent videos because we've been talking about this extensively, that the cause is within. It is a state, or as Napoleon Hill calls it, a vibration. And the state within expresses outwards to reveal the state in the external world that reflects the cause within, which is the state within. A state of happiness, a state of flow, a state of joy within reflects accordingly. Now, the interesting thing about this is that in those states, there's also people, environments, circumstances, and experiences that you might not have been exposed to before that will be revealed to you because there's many things that exist in different states or different vibrations. So if you find yourself in an empowered state, what you're going to notice is you're going to get access to empowering information, people, circumstance, environment. By changing the consciousness within to an empowered state, you experience empowering information, people, environment, circumstance, information in the external world that is of that nature. You will start to see more of that. But the bottom line is this. We have to change and evolve the state within. Always remember, as Napoleon Hill says, the subconscious mind will transmute into its physical equivalent by the most direct and practical media available, any order which is given 
to it in a state of belief or faith that the order will be carried out. So now that's a key distinction right there. The state of belief and faith. So we have to ask ourselves, that what we desire to create. Do we feel a state of absolute faith and belief in that what we desire to create? Do we believe that it's possible? Now we know that auto-suggestion and imagination actually impresses the subconscious mind in a way that gets the subconscious to believe that it is in fact that way right now. That is the way that it is right now. And through the repetition, faith and belief is formed. And through that, we experience reality. We experience the faith and belief. We experience that state within. And we start to navigate reality and see within reality in front of us the signs, the synchronicities that reveal to us that it is molding and shaping according to how we believe and the state that is within. The imagination is literally the workshop wherein are fashioned all plans created by man. The impulse, the desire is given shape and form and action through the aid of the imaginative faculty of the mind. So we must hold true that the state of consciousness is what we're looking to achieve that is related to what we desire, or as Napoleon Hill says, the vibration. And what we also have to do is we have to hold true that, true to it in our imagination with faith and belief and navigate reality from that perspective. And if anything is denied by the five sensory experiences in the external world, we have to note those things down and change the subconscious programming within which is a net result of programming from a previous state that we have experienced that we have hold true. And there is no other cause for it except the state within. So a person can be living in their imagination and experiencing reality as contrarian because there's still within them a subconscious state that's being expressed outwards and experiencing those contrarian elements in reality. So we honor those subconscious elements in reality that are not in alignment. We seek to understand them, and we track them back to the cause within, and we adjust it through affirmations, through imagination, but we work with our consciousness within to change the state within, to make it more harmonious with that what we desire, and it is reflected outwards. He talks about the creative imagination. He says, through the faculty of creative imagination, the finite man, a mind of man, has direct communication with infinite intelligence. It is the faculty, faculty through which hunches and inspirations are received. It is by this faculty that all basic or new ideas are handed over to man. So ideas, hunches, inspirations on what to do and how to navigate reality is found within when you work with the creative imagination. When you hold true to the belief and faith of the vision, the dream, the burning desire, for me it was one burning desire to the next burning desire to the next burning desire, which he calls in Think and Grow Rich the definite chief aim. By having a definite chief aim and observing reality as everything is contributing to your definite chief aim, we work with the creative imagination in a way that brings forth from infinite intelligence hunches and inspirations to modify our behaviors. And a lot of times it happens automatic because it programs the subconscious mind. That imagination, act, or the belief and the fate reprograms and rewrites the meaning, the disempowering meaning that was contrary to that, and causes us to automatically behave in a certain way and make us more in alignment and harmonious to that. And we'll notice that we'll have hunches and inspirations to take certain actions, to do certain things, to pay attention to certain information. And all of this is part of the process of reflecting with absolute precision this desired state with the external world. Number four, the changes would take place in your life as a result of your changed concept of yourself always appear to the unlightened to be the result not of cha change of your consciousness, but of chance, outer cause, or coincidence. See, what is experienced when we look at somebody who's changed their consciousness within, and now they're experiencing that what we desire or that what they desire and everything is harmonious to them, is we'll start to associate it with all kinds of external circumstance and conditions. 
And maybe if the person who created that change did not do it in this way where they worked with this kind of information, they might not even realize that it was a net result of the consciousness within that change first. So when people experience it, they say, well, he changed because of this and that external situation. When the truth is this, the consciousness was changed first. Now, the consciousness might have been stimulated by experiences in the environment, but the bottom line is still this. When you change the concept of yourself, when you change the consciousness of yourself, and you believe yourself to be in that state, the external world changes, and as Steve Jobs said, you cannot connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So you follow your intuition, you trust yourself, you honor that what you desire to be, the external world changes in some shape or form. Sometimes you'll be doing things, sometimes you'll be attracting certain people, but you'll notice that you'll navigate reality different. That's the story. And people will look at the story and try to reverse engineer it back to whatever meaning they give. But one of the things we always have to remember that it was a changed concept of self, a change in consciousness that created it. That's why it's very important, and I recommend this in the last video, to study how people think and how they believe reality to work. How they think and how they believe reality to work translates into the kind of results they have in their life. If you look at their results and you study them and you get to know them, you'll see how their inner conversations, how they believe reality to work, translated into that what they experience in the external world, the results. So if you aspire to create a certain level of success or produce a certain level of results, it's important to surround yourself with people that have that, get access to them, and understand how they think, how they believe reality to work. And from there, understand and cross-reference that what they're really revealing to you is what is within their consciousness. And they got there by having the consciousness that they reveal to you but their, by their choices of words or the conversations that they have or how they give meaning to different experiences in the life. So you can look at how they treat others, how they treat themselves, how they communicate about different scenarios and circumstances in life, the choices of words, and it will reveal to you how they got to where they are. The subconscious mind will not remain idle. If you fail to plant desires in your subconscious mind, it will feed upon the thoughts which reach it as a result of your neglect. So remember this. Having a definite chief aim is very important, and Napoleon Hill talks about a concept called drifting and outwitting the devil. To keep your mind saturated and engaged on your definite chief aim and realizing that everything in your life is related to your definite chief aim, the important areas of your life, relationships, friendships, health, fitness, wellness, spirituality, everything is related to your definite chief aim, will keep your mind saturated with that which empowers you and uplifts you and motivates you to hold true to your imagination, to that what you desire, and it will contribute to altering the consciousness within to bring forth the result in a more harmonious way. If you don't do that and you're being neglectful, you might take in information that's disempowering, negative, that does not help you feel empowered. Pay attention to the kind of information that you are consuming. One of my litmus tests is I'm always paying attention to see if that information creates upliftment, empowerment within me, is related to my definite chief aim, or if it's not. If it's infusing me with doubt, fear, indecision, then I question the kind of information that I take in and I choose not to take in that information. That is a result of conscious choosing. What you'll find is if you consume information that disempowers you, that instills fears, doubts, and indecision within you, then you will experience that as different kinds of experiences, because that's going into your subconscious mind all throughout the day, and that will likely end up in you breaking faith and drifting away from that what you desire to create. Because anything that your subconscious mind takes in will be brought forth. So guarding the subconscious mind to the best of your ability is very important. Napoleon Hill says there are four simple steps which lead to the habit of persistence. So we're going to translate this to habit of persistence in guarding our subconscious mind, which is going to infuse our consciousness or encourage our imagination and protect that what we want to create and nurture ourselves to be able to create. He says they call for no great amount of intelligence, no particular amount of education, 
and but little time or effort. The necessary steps are. So by applying persistence to guarding and nurturing our subconscious mind. He says, a definite purpose backed by a burning desire for its fulfillment. Why so? Because when you have a definite chief aim, when you have something that you want to create, you're going to be consumed by that information, and by relating everything in your life to that definite chief aim, you're able to create a more harmonious life and appreciate all that you have in your life, and that is going to saturate your mind to the state of a burning desire in which information that is contrary to that won't even hit your radar to get your attention, which will allow you to drift. Number two, a definite plan expressed in continuous action. So we've got our time, we've got our energy, we've got our resources, and the key is to direct everything towards a definite chief aim, a purpose, so that we can keep our mind occupied with that what we desire to create. Number three, a mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences including negative suggestions of relatives, friends, and acquaintances. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to cut people out of your life. It just means that you have to be aware of the kind of conversations you are encouraging around the people that you're with, realizing that that information is going in and programming your subconscious mind. So it's important to be mindful of the kind of information you're taking in. Number four, a friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage one to follow through with both plan and purpose. So he refers to this as the mastermind, having two or more people working together towards a related outcome or related definite chief aim or just a philosophy in the spirit of harmony. Doing this, again, saturates your consciousness with the abundance philosophy, the empowering philosophy, protects your subconscious mind and guards it from negative influences and causes you to have a harmonious relationship within, experience more flow, the relationship between the conscious mind, the subconscious, and the superconscious. So number five, Neville says, all transformation is based upon suggestion, and this can work only where you lay yourself completely open to an influence, okay, suggestion. Surrounding yourself with people, environment, circumstance, information, to that what is related to your definite G fame to imagine more often the desired outcome that you would like to create, to saturate your mind which is that, with that what is related towards your vision, will encourage the seeds to grow and blossom into act, actions, or attraction towards people, environment, and circumstance that contribute, and keep you in a state of spirit of harmony. You will feel in harmony because you won't have lack of congruence within from consuming information or being around certain kinds of scenarios where you realize within yourself it's not harmonious. You will feel a greater sense of congruence and peace within. Now this even ties into the work that we talked about with David Hawkins, the levels of consciousness. What you want to be is in a high state of consciousness. Bliss, joy, unconditional love, and this is experienced by being in harmony within harmony with the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, the superconscious, as well as being in harmony with that which you want to create. And we have the power to do this by being selective on what we take in, the kind of information we take in from the varied sources and the meaning we give to it. Napoleon Hill says, autosuggestion is a term which applies to all suggestions and all self-administrated stimuli which reaches one's mind through the five senses. So autosuggestion can be affirmations, statements, vision board, imaginal acts, as Neville Goddard prefers that methodology, and living in the state that you desire to create, as Abdullah had taught him. He says, stated in another way, autosuggestion is self-suggestion. It is an agency of, communicating, of communication between the part of the mind where conscious thought takes place and what serves as the seat of action for the subconscious mind. So information is being taken in consciously via the five senses and the sixth sense to that what is related towards the definite chief aim, to that what is related to the vision, that what is related to what you want to create, to support everything else that you are doing to create your vision. By saturating your mind with the information that is related towards your vision, you reprogram the subconscious mind, you impress the subconscious mind, you do it from a place of 
spirit of harmony, not from a place of force. And what will be expressed from the subconscious mind is the external world that is a net result of the consciousness shift, the state shift that occurs as a result of what is mindfully been taken in via the auto-suggestion principle through the five senses and even the sixth sense, the imagination. Not only thought impulses, which have been mixed with faith, but those that have been mixed with any of the positive emotions or any of the negative emotions may reach and influence the subconscious mind. Very important to remember. So number six, Neville says, Therefore, when you know what you want, you must deliberately focus your attention on the feeling of your wish fulfilled until that feeling fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. So the feeling is the vibration. How you feel, that's a vibration. If you step into a room and you get a bad feeling, that is not honoring the vibration that is related to the excitement vibration of that what you desire. And what you're doing is you're allowing that vibration to go into your consciousness, and that is going to distort because the meaning is going in via the five senses, and that feeling is part of it, and it is creating certain kinds of inharmony within the consciousness. So we have to ask ourselves, why do we feel that way? Why are we there? Why do we choose to not honor the feeling of the wish fulfilled and continuously honor it all throughout our day? So Napoleon Hill says, a mind dominated by positive emotions becomes a favorable abode for the state of mind known as faith. A mind so dominated may at will give the subconscious mind instructions which it will accept and act upon immediately. So the goal with this process, what we're talking about here, is to develop unwavering faith, lighthearted faith, not from a place of force, to that what we want to create, that what is our true desire, that what is related to bringing forth our authentic soul expression. As mentioned earlier, we have an identity that may or may not be our true identity, and we want to evolve that identity, which is a net result of what we have consumed information from the external world and meaning that we've identified with ourselves, with our true identity, and only person that knows the true identity of who you are destined to become is you and God, which is found in your imagination. Fortunes gravitate to those minds who have been prepared to attract them, just as surely as water gravitates to the ocean, in this book may be found all the stimuli necessary to attune any normal mind to the vibrations which attract the object of one's desire. So putting yourself in a state of mind to attract not only that what you desire, but what is related to that will also further uncover that what you want to create next. This is what I have found. What I did was first, I chose to get out of the $50,000 debt. And then right then and there, I found myself in a different environment, a totally different reality, a different state in the external world because the consciousness had changed within. And then from there, I had further inspiration of what I wanted to create next. And it kept going, and it just keeps going in this direction. So every point of my life, I have committed to always have a definite chief aim. And to apply what is being discussed here and all throughout my videos and the philosophies of Thinking Grow Rich to continuously create it to move into higher and higher states as what Neville talks about, higher and higher manifestations or the manifestations of higher and higher concepts. And our goal is to keep elevating and leveling up to higher versions of ourselves. Number seven, persistence in this assumption will result in actually experiencing, in fact, that what you have assumed, okay, persistence. Napoleon Hill says, through some strange and powerful principle of mental chemistry, which she has never divulged, nature wraps, its up, nature wraps up in the impulse of strong desire that something which recognizes no such word as impossible and accepts no such reality as failure. So what we have to do is cultivate in our mind, and we've talked about it extensively throughout the videos, and we'll continue to do so because we're going to cover it from many different angles, 
We want to infuse the idea that it is possible to achieve that we, what we want. What you want to create is yours. It has been given to you from the divine and creator for you to realize the power that is within you. And you create it by nurturing, honoring, and infusing information within your subconscious mind that is related or indirectly related to bringing forth, which is empowering information which does not know the word impossible. Even if the five senses deny it, you have to hold true to that till it is brought forth and it will be brought forth. Every person who wins in any undertaking must be willing to burn his ships and cut all sources of retreat. Only by doing so can one be sure of maintaining that state of mind known as the burning desire to win, essential to success. So we see a lot of parallels between what Napoleon Hill talks about and what Neville Goddard talks about. They just use various different phraseology. You know, one of my favorite quotes from The Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale, I recommend you watch the video I did on it, is prophets, wise people have disagreed upon many different things. There's one thing that they're complete and unanimous about, uh, in agreement about, and that is that we become what we think about. So Neville says it one way, Napoleon Hill says it another way, and I've got my own way that I've uncovered, which is a hybrid, but we're all saying the same thing. You become what you think about. And the idea is what you think about is within your subconscious mind predominantly. What is being created is predominantly within the subconscious mind. If you don't believe with absolute faith that you can create it, we have to go within and understand why that doubt exists within our consciousness and release it. That's what he means by burn the ships and cut out all sources of retreat. It is not done from a place of force. It's done from a place of embrace, understanding, and acceptance that that what you want to create is given to you by the creator to create. And the story of this life is to teach you how to create. And if it is given to you in your vision, and that is what you desire to create, then you are being supported to create it, and the way you're being supported is by what is being revealed in the external world, which is a projection of your subconscious mind. Is it harmonious or is it not? And we change the programming within in the subconscious mind till it is in harmony, and then the state internally is honored with absolute faith, and he calls it the burning desire, and it reflects outwards and expresses into form. There's a difference between wishing for a thing, he says, and being ready to receive. No one is ready for a thing until he believes he can acquire it. The state of mindfulness or the state of mind must be belief, not mere hope or wish. Open-mindedness is essential for belief. Closed minds do not inspire faith, courage, and belief. Open up your mind to the possibility and the truth that it is so. Allow yourself to imagine that what you desire to create. Honor it. Continuously live as it is so. Keep an open mind that the most unexpected hunches, inspiration, people, environment, and circumstance will reveal itself synchronistically and harmoniously so to bring forth your results. Trust and rely upon the power of the sixth sense to bring it forth in the most harmonious way. Now, this is not something new to you. You have experienced this in many stages of your life. And the reason why I express this and teach this philosophy is because I realize that I tap into this more so today than ever before. I'm working with the sixth sense a lot more than ever before. There used to be a time in my life where I needed to plan everything till the end. And sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't. The answer is it depends. But the bottom line is this. The more you work with this information, the more you cleanse your subconscious mind of that what limits you and creates doubt within you and fear related to that what you want to create, the more you tap into the infinite abundance available to you via the sixth sense, and that right there is infinite intelligence. And it will be expressed to you in various shapes and forms through a voice within, through hunches and experiences, and conversations within. Watch the video I did on The Secret Chapter by Napoleon Hill. I'll put a link in the description. And number eight, all progress, all fulfillment of desire depend upon the control and concentration of your attention. Attention may be either attracted from without or directed from within. So one of my favorite exercises is to be really present and aware to what 
causes me to become distracted and realize that the distraction, I'm not going to change the external. I'm going to change the cause within. I'm going to change the meaning within via my subconscious mind so I'm no longer attracted to that distraction if it's not related to my vision. And what I notice is it does not even hit my radar anymore. Everything is a net result of changing consciousness within. What we have to do is be born again into the mind, step out of the external locus of control, and go into an internal locus of co control, realizing that we are the cause within. Now, one of my favorite quotes from Think and Grow Rich is this. A great many years ago, I purchased a fine dictionary. The first thing I did with it was to turn to the word impossible and neatly clip it out of the book. That would not be an unwise thing for you to do. Success comes through those who become success conscious. Failure comes to those who allow themselves to become failure conscious. Okay? Allow themselves. Five sensory-based data input and meaning creates failure consciousness or success consciousness. The question is, what do you encourage? What is within you? How can you reveal within yourself? Well, your subconscious mind is always revealing to you what's in the external world. We can look at a person or yourself right now and realize what kind of consciousness has been impressed in your subconscious mind, and you could choose right now to change the consciousness around. Success consciousness will always be presented via the sixth sense. The sixth sense always brings forth success consciousness. This is what I found. By trusting my imagination in the most harmonious way possible through a combination of act, attraction, vibration, changing states, focusing my attention in certain directions, synchronicities, and so forth, my definite chief aim is always brought forth. That I leave it up to predominantly the sixth sense, although sometimes I work with the five senses. But as mentioned, the more you work with this philosophy, the more you understand it, the more you believe it to be true in the possibility of it, the more you will find it will work for you. And then finally, Napoleon Hill says, no thought, whether it be positive or negative, can enter the subconscious mind without the aid of the principle of autosuggestion. So it's either happening to you. Autosuggestion is not just a principle that you do through affirmations or visualization or involving the five senses in your imagination. It is something that is happening all the time with the information that you are consuming. That's how information has entered your subconscious mind, and that is how you have been living reality. The question is, do we want to become and honor the conscious way of creating? We want to be conscious creators. He says, with the exception of thoughts picked up from the ether, stated differently, all sense impressions which are perceived through the five senses are stopped by the conscious thinking mind and may be either passed on to the subconscious mind or rejected at will. The conscious faculty serves, therefore, as an outer guard to the approach of the subconscious. So that what is revealed to you in your imagination will be harmonious, pure thoughts, uplifting thoughts, abundance-based thoughts, hunches, creative ways of bringing forth that what you desire that what you receive via your five senses, you have to be discerning about. You have to choose, and you have to consciously guard your subconscious mind from anything that is inharmonious to that what you want to create and encourage the consumption of that information that supports that you want to create, and you have the ability. And the higher and greater of practice that you apply this, the greater your ability to catch what shows up and presents itself that is not harmonious and release it right away. Not from a place of force, not from a place of anger, but rather accepting that there's different kinds of information, positive and negative, and you choose the positive information. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.